Hi, this is Pat Cosgrove for Cosgrove's Cosmos. Today we'll be talking about my observatory project. This time we'll be focusing on the design of custom steel piers that will be used inside the observatory. Let's get started. As I've said before, my observatory was inspired by the West Texas Observatory. And in that project, they use four poured concrete piers to support their telescopes. Now, what attracted me to their design to begin with was the four piers. So when I began to plan my observatory, having four concrete piers is something that was pretty natural to do. I was just following in their footsteps. After all, the concrete is strong, it's solid, it doesn't vibrate very much, and you don't really need special tools to construct it. A sauna tube, a rebar, uh, J bar suspended with a holder, and some poured concrete. And since we're pouring the concrete for the foundation, adding in the piers seemed like a very natural thing to do. So, as I did my initial design for the observatory, I included four piers that were going to be concrete. I hadn't quite decided whether they're going to be 10 inch diameter or 12 inch diameter, but I was kind of leaning towards a 12 inch. With that being my starting plan, I got the ball rolling. And as I began to work on the observatory project itself, a few concerns began to raise their head. First started when my wife asked me a question. She said, what happens many years down the road and we sell this property and there's this observatory in the backyard? It seems highly unlikely that whoever buys this house will happen to be an astrophotographer who will value having a roll-off roof observatory in the backyard. What are we going to do about that? And I said, well, you know, I suppose we could clamp the roof down so it doesn't roll. And then you have a shed in the backyard for storage. And she says, well, that's not going to work because the main area you'd want to store things in, you're going to have these massive concrete piers that aren't going to be so easy to remove. And she kind of had a good point there. Another concern was that when I started thinking about this pre-COVID, this was a very economical way to go. The cost of the concrete to create these piers was pretty reasonable compared to commercially available uh, metal piers. But with COVID and inflation, suddenly now concrete prices had shot through the roof and the price difference between pouring a concrete pier and buying a commercial steel one wasn't as great as it used to be. And finally, I wondered if having a 10 or 12 inch diameter pier was going to end up being a problem. All the large scopes that I have right now are sitting on ioptron tri piers. And in tri piers, the upper column is about six inches in diameter. And my telescope configurations are sort of optimized for that. They can go through quite a range of motion. And I don't have to worry about the camera or any other part crashing into the pier. And I wondered if that would be true if I ended up going with a 10 or 12 inch pier. That's a lot more area down below and I can imagine scenarios where as the scope was slewing, I might end up hitting the concrete pier. All that caused me to start playing around with the idea of putting in a steel pier. With a steel pier, I could still pour the foundation for the pier, but I would have bolts that the pier itself could bolt onto. But if I made the foundation for the piers about four inches lower than the slab floor of the observatory itself, when it came time to move and I want to convert this to a shed, it would be a pretty simple matter to unbolt the piers, remove them, and put a cover plate over the holes where the piers were. Now I have a shed with plenty of storage, and it seems like that kind of storage is pretty attractive when people are looking for buying a house. Now, all in all, taking this approach was probably going to cost me more money. But my wife thought it was worth it to have something that could be better positioned when we sold the house down the road. So the first thing I did, I started to investigate commercially available piers. And there are quite a few of them out there. Some of them aren't that costly. Some can get very costly. But as I looked at them, there was a few things that sort of popped out that caused me some concern. One was the price. Some of the ones that I kind of favored got pretty pricey. And I'm buying four of them, so that adds up quickly. The other thing I saw was a lot of the piers had a fixed size, so that to get the pier exactly the way I wanted it wasn't that easy to, to accomplish. And the final concern was many of these piers weren't in stock. If I ordered them, there's significant lead times. And since I'm looking to start build here within two months, and I want to have my parts on hand when that begins, that was a problem. So between the cost, the availability, and the physical configuration, I wasn't sure I was going to get what I really wanted, but my hands were kind of tied because the only other alternative was to build a custom pier, and uh, I have no metalworking skills whatsoever that would allow me to do that. 
I've had a lot of good luck with the Ioptron tripe here, and I really like the fact that the column was about six inches in diameter. When I put the mount on it, it just seemed like it made it very easy for the scope to move around that pier without hitting anything. As I said, I've had a lot of good luck with the tripe here, but it's not necessarily the most solid of piers. Obviously, the walls are fairly thin, and it is sitting on tripod feet, and while it's reasonably robust and it worked well for me, it's not rock solid. But it seemed to me that I could make a pier with a 6-inch steel column that would replace it and allow me to use the configurations I have now and take advantage of that. So I was at a crossroads, and I didn't really know what I should do. So, as I often do when I'm struggling with a problem and I'm trying to think my way through it, I began to run it by some of my Astro friends. So as I talked to various friends about this, one in particular I knew had built his own pier, and it was a pretty heavy-duty pier for his observatory build. And his name was Gary Villa. Now, Gary was an old friend of mine from college, but once we graduated and went on in our lives, we sort of lost touch. 30 years later, Gary ended up building his own observatory, and he stumbled across my website. And he contacted me through the website, and it was great to hear from him once again. And even better to find out we now had a shared interest, and he was located fairly close to me. So we've rekindled that friendship, and it's really been great. So shortly after we reconnected, he shared with me pictures of the observatory he had built from himself, and I was frankly astounded. It was a huge observatory with a huge telescope, and it was exquisitely designed and really well built. As part of this, though, he did design and build his own pier, and it was a beast of a pier. Uh, here's a shot of it. This thing weighs 300 pounds by itself. This was after it was welded, but before it got painted up. But it's a beautiful piece of work. As you can see... Gary thinks big, and Gary plays big. Well, Gary was able to do this because, first off, he's a very smart and driven guy. And second, he happens to own a business that specializes in cutting things with lasers. And one of the things that he can cut is plate steel up to one inch thick. And he also had a network of vendors who could handle things like welding, sandblasting, and painting. As we talked about the piers that I needed and what he had gone through, he suggested he'd be happy to help me create the piers that I wanted to have. I have to tell you, I was completely floored by this amazing and generous offer. I would have no capability of producing this myself. And offering this is not just a help, it's, a, it's kind of a miracle that would enable me to get to where I wanted to go with a means of doing that. Now that I had Gary's help to move forward, the next question was designing the pier. And in this case, I had another ace in hold. Rick Albrecht, who I've mentioned several times in my other blog posts, is a talented mechanical engineer who has quite a bit of experience in designing both observatories and telescopes. And Rick, over the years, has been a huge help to me as I thought through various aspects of projects that needed mechanical engineering perspective. And he was very interested and offered to help design the scope as we go forward. So once again, Rick was coming to my rescue. And between these two friends, I suddenly felt like I had a path to build some custom piers that would meet my needs, specifically with the way I wanted them to come out, and would allow me to do something that by myself I couldn't do at all. I can't tell you how touched and grateful I am for the help of these two gentlemen. I'm going to have to work very hard to repay their generosity. So as I talked with Rick about what I was interested in doing, we started to develop this idea of kind of a starting design. So Rick and I began to talk about what a custom pier would look like. And we started with what I was using now, the tri pier from my Optron. So we decided we'd go with a steel column that was about six inches in diameter and maybe a quarter of an inch thick. And we'd make it about 47 inches off the floor because that's basically how I have my tri pier set up right now. So assuming the surface of the foundation for the pier was four inches below the slab that was going to be the floor of the observatory. So that meant that the total height of the pier would have to be about 51 inches. In our first cut, we decided that the flange could be probably around nine inches in diameter, and we probably could get by with four bolts to bolt it down into the concrete foundation using uh, J-bars. And at the top of the pier, we decided we would put a quarter inch plate of steel that would be tapped so that we could screw things down into it. So that was our initial design. And with these ideas, my friend Gary started to look at his metal sources, and he found that we could buy steel pipe that had six and five eighths inch diameter and a 0.28 uh, inch thickness in 21 foot lengths for a pretty reasonable price. And the vendor would cut the pipe to the lengths we wanted so we can get the material for four piers out of that source. Then if we looked at plate steel, he had good access to plate steel. And once we had the design of the parts in mind, he could easily cut those from steel. So this is all good news. And the pipe that he found was a little bit larger in diameter, 
and the walls were a little bit thicker than we were contemplating, but that's all a good thing. So with this initial design in hand, I started to think about what questions I had that had to be addressed by the design as we sought to refine it. My first question was, how would we level the pier? I'm gonna bolt this onto a foundation. There's no mechanism for leveling this. But as we talked it over, we decided that uh, given Gary's experience with his mount, he, we felt that we could probably use a laser level and get the initial uh, foundation level enough that either would be fine by, it, by itself or it would be fine with a little bit of shimming. So we decided we were okay on that particular front. Next question I had is how would we orient the pier when we mounted it? We're going to drop this pier onto the foundation and then I'm going to drop a mount on top of that. Now the mount has some ability to adjust in uh, azimuth and altitude in order to do polar alignment, but it has to be pretty close for it to reach. So how do I make sure that when we put the piers in, we have that? Is there a way we can design the piers to make them adjustable when we first drop them in to ensure that we absolutely would be able to accommodate uh, adjustments on the mount for polar alignment? As we talked this over, this actually drove quite a few changes to the design. First thing we did is we decided we we're going to put a steel plate into the pier foundation. This would act as a rotational base that would allow us to drop the pier onto it and have a nice flat surface that we could level and then we could rotate the pier on. The other thing we did in the design is we moved the size of the bottom flange of the pier from 9 inches up to 12 inches and we changed the number of bolts from four to six. And the final thing we did is we changed the flange from holes to cut curved slots. And the idea here is we could drop the pier onto the bolts, and then we have some ability to rotate the pier to get it finely tuned, and then we could bolt it down. Now, because we were putting a bigger flange on and we wanted things to be strong, um, the other thing we ended up doing besides adding more bolts is we, we put gussets into the design, and we designed some custom wedge-shaped washers that we could put on top of things to clamp it all together and make it strong. Here's the concept diagram that uh, Rick had put together. And as you can see here on the right, you can see the circular plate that would be put on the foundation. And on the left, you can see the bottom flange of the pier. You can also see the gussets and where they would go and the curved elongated holes that would drop down over the bolts. And in this concept diagram, you can see how one would stack on top of the other the top one would be able to rotate, and then we would be able to bolt it down into the orientation we wanted. Next question I had was, how are we going to mount the telescopes to the pier, uh, both now and in the future? And as we talked about it, we decided what we were going to do is we're going to put a top plate on the pier that instead of being a quarter inches would be a half inch plate steel. This makes it a little bit thicker so that we can put drill holes of various size and we can tap those holes for bolting things in. And we decided that at first cut, we were going to use a particular hole pattern that was based on the use of the iOptron top pier plate, which is commercially available for around $60 or $70. Here's a picture of one of those plates now set up in the CEM60 configuration. You can see the two posts on the left and the right. And circled in red is a series of holes on the inside which I wouldn't be using in any of my configurations. So we thought if we drilled those holes out, we could put quarter inch bolts in and we could bolt that right down to the top of the pier. And having done so, this becomes the mounting point for the CEM60 pier. This would handle <clears throat> two of my telescopes and actually it would handle a third because I have an option of using a CEM26 mount on a third. But as it turns out, Ioptron sells a converter that goes from the base of the CEM26 to a CEM60 base mount. So with this one solution, we can mount three telescopes. And this next picture here, I've taken those four holes and not only have I drilled them out, but I've also countersunk them. Uh, and in the final picture, you can, you can see where I have some flathead machine screws that drop into the countersinks so they don't hit anything and it won't impact the base as it rotates on this particular pier plate. The final telescope that I have to deal with is using um, an AM5 wave strain uh, mount. And as it turns out, one mounting option for the AM5 is to use a standard tripod 3 8 inch threaded post. So that seemed to offer uh, an opportunity. We could create an adapter plate, which would be six inches in diameter, would have the same holes as we were putting in for the CEM60 top plate. But in this case, the center of the plate would have a 3 8 inch thread cut into it so that we could bolt things together. Now using the extender, which is available for the AM5, I can put a bolt inside that cage 
and I can tighten that down into the mount and that will attach it. So now I had a way of attaching all the scope mounts that I had, but it wouldn't necessarily handle all the, all the scopes and the mounts I might have in the future. But what we decided is with a half inch steel top plate, it really wouldn't be that difficult to create an arbitrary adapter plate and we could drill and tap any holes into that that we needed for future applications. So we're, we felt that this was a reasonable way to go forward. Now, the other question I had was that I'm, I was pretty confident that the pier would be strong and stiff. And I was also pretty confident that I wouldn't have that much vibration because the walls of the observatory would protect from wind buffeting. But in case there was a little bit of ringing that I wanted to deal with, we talked about having the opportunity to fill the pier with sand, compacted sand. So what we decided to do is to leave an open hole at the top of the pier so that sand could be poured in if we ever decided we needed that. Some sand could be poured in, it could be tamped down or vibrated down. If we fill that in, that would have a significant dampening effect for any ringing if we ever felt we needed that. Frankly, I don't think that's going to be a big issue because this is so much heavier duty than the tri pair that I've been using successfully for years. I'm not too concerned on that particular front. So after going through all this, we kind of finalized our design. And then Rick took on the task of starting to create uh, 2D CAD diagrams of the individual parts that we would have to create. So let's go through what he created now. Now, keep in mind that this particular design is based on you know, my particular configuration and what I wanted to accomplish. Uh, these particular parts might not be useful for anyone else based on what they want to accomplish. So you really have to be cognizant that these dimensions are optimized for my particular application and might not be suitable for yours at all. First thing we'll notice is the bottom plate, which will be mounted on the concrete foundation. On top of that, we'll have the bottom flange and you can see the slotted holes that allow the base to rotate for the pier. And finally, you can see the custom wedges we're using to clamp things down to make them a little bit stronger as we bolt this to the foundation. Here's the top plate that we're considering with the four holes that we talked about and the center being cut out uh, as a potential fill point for sand. And this picture has all the pieces put together. This acts as kind of a guide to the welder to know how to put this thing together. But you can see the gussets now. You can see how the plate and the pipe are meeting together and how the top plate would go on. With these CAD diagrams, Gary and one of the gentlemen in his company were able to create a 3D CAD representation of the mount. And uh, I did a little video segment here so you can rotate it around in 3D and get a sense of what we're trying to build. So with all this in hand, Gary had what he needed to go out and get quotes not only for the materials, but for the work that he would be handling through his network of vendor, the welding, the sandblasting, and the painting. So as these quotes came back, I thought that the totals were pretty reasonable, given that we're building custom piers and that would meet exactly what I want to do for my observatory. And with those numbers in hand, I was able to pull the trigger and get the project started. In the next installment, I'm going to talk about cutting the parts out of plate steel using a laser. Uh, this work's already been done, so I've already had that experience, and it was a very, very cool experience. And I got to tell you, Luke Skywalker has nothing over the lightsaber skills I saw being used to cut these parts out. And I'll be digging into that in part two of this series on the custom pier, and that'll be coming along here in the next few days. Thanks again for spending some time with me today. I welcome any comments or questions, both on my website and on this YouTube channel. So this is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos. I'm wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.